Hey, just a quick video here. I want to show you a feature of JavaScript that might be useful uh, when you're building your projects and translating them using Leopard. Uh, one of the things that I do pretty often in Scratch is I have a repeat loop, but while I'm in the loop, I care about which time I'm on. Like, it's going to do it ten times. I care about which one is it. Is this the first time, the second time, the third time? Um, and so what I have to do is I have to go and create a variable. And that's kind of annoying, right? Because, like, maybe what I want to do here is just say 10 times, um, you know, maybe I want to make the scratch cat count to 10. And so it's like, well, okay, I can, uh, maybe I'll, I'll make my own variable and I'll call it count, right? And then I only ever want it for this one single script. I guess I'll make it for this sprite only because that's the best I can do. And I'll set count to uh, maybe, like, one and then I'll change count by one at the bottom of the loop so it sort of goes up here I'll make it say it for just a short amount of time and we'll say count so we'll just have the scratch kit count from one to ten so that's fine but one of the things is now I have this variable right and it's it's kind of annoying and sometimes what happens is I have like multiple different repeat loops throughout the project and so either I end up with a bunch of different variables that are just like count, count two, count three, count four, or I try to reuse the same count variable over and over again, but the problem with that is uh, I end up with, like sometimes scripts can interfere with each other, it just becomes sort of a big hassle. So I want to show you what happens in JavaScript and how we can make this better. So I'm going to save this project and I'm going to go to the Leopard website and I'm just going to translate my project and you can see it works the same way and if we edit with JavaScript uh, we should see it's a pretty direct translation of what we did in Scratch so we'll wait for this to load here we'll open up sprite 1 and in the sprite 1 JavaScript we say when the green flag is clicked uh, set the count variable to 1 and then repeat 10 times uh, and then we say you know say the count variable and increase count by one. But what's interesting here is this I thing, right? You can see the number 10. It makes sense that when we have a repeat 10, then there's a 10 in there. But it's like, what's everything else that's going on here? Well, it turns out that finding out which loop you're on is actually built into JavaScript, into this for loop. So we don't have to do the counting ourselves. So where we set up this count variable, I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to delete the count variable entirely. So we're not going to set count to 1. We're not going to increase count. And then right here, well, we still got to figure out what to do with this. So I'm just going to put, huh? Right? So, so you're like, well, we got rid of the variable. How can we possibly know which loop we're on? Well, actually, this i right here does exactly that. This i is a variable. It's a number that tells us which loop we're on. And so if I put i in here, I didn't have to make the variable myself, it's just a part of the for loop. But you can see I saved my code, and when I run it, I'm still counting. I'm counting, but you can see I go up to nine. Uh, and what's actually happening here is that i, instead of going from one to 10, it goes from zero to nine. And so one way that I can change this is by saying that I should start at one and instead of ending uh, or, or instead of looping while I is less than 10, I can do it while I is less than or equal to. Um, but the other option here is just to add one. So I goes from zero to nine. So I just say I plus one. So I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, and that's it. This is the whole trick, is just to know that, hey, when you're doing a repeat loop in JavaScript, that sort of counting of which step you're on, that happens automatically. And the other great thing is that uh, if I have two different, different for loops, right, they can both uh, call their variable i, uh, but they're going to sort of use different variables. And so it's less likely that you're going to have problems where uh, you sort of have these variable names all over the place or that you have uh, you're reusing a variable name but then 
the scripts interfere, a lot of that just goes away with JavaScript. So if you're curious about the for loop, you can look it up on Google. When you're learning JavaScript, Google is going to be your friend. Um, but I just want you to know that that's something that you can do. All right, good luck.